welcome to my job, man. It's my job. Everybody doesn't have an audience on their job. Might be nice if they did, though. Have three people sitting on the other side of your desk? Yes, hey, he's okay. <laughs> I grew up in a neighborhood right next to a black, uh, right next to Harlem. Uh, well, we had an interesting neighborhood. It was a little Irish neighborhood with Columbia University all on one side, like including everything connected with Columbia, like Juilliard School of Music was there and the Union Theological Seminary, Jewish Theological Seminary, Riverside Church, St. Luke's Hospital, St. John the Divine Cathedral, all of that stuff on one side. Oh. On the other side, Harlem. <laughs> and we call our little neighborhood White Harlem because it sounded bad, you know? Where you from? White Hall. Yeah. <laughs> sound tough, sound bad. The real name was Morningside Heights. <laughs> that neighborhood was powerful, powerful magnet and influence on my father. And I think it took my dad about 30 years to even accept that he actually lived in LA. <laughs> A clip of George's is making the rounds these days because of his comments on abortion. I get that clip at least once a day in my mail. He was very kind to, to, to my mother who lived there till, you know, till she died. And he would always come in and he visited her on a number of times. Um, and George always stayed in touch with uh, his classmates from Corpus. Pro-life conservatives are obsessed with the fetus from conception to nine months. After that, they don't want to know about you. They don't want to hear from you. No nothing. No neonatal care, no daycare, no head start, no school lunch, no food stamps, no welfare, no nothing. They're not pro-life. You know what they are? They're anti-woman. Simple as it gets. Anti-woman. They don't like them. A quote he had is, don't, do, don't just teach your children to read, teach them to question what they read, teach them to question everything. And I think that quote kind of encapsulates the way that I view the world, obviously, as an attorney, that's what we do. But being critical of, I don't want to say the lies, but the propaganda that we're kind of sold in this country. I think a lot of that shaped the way that I approached comedy and not, not just comedy, but approach my life. Sounds more like one group trying to control another group. In other words, business as usual in America. Now, if you think you do have rights, one last assignment for you. Next time you're at the computer, get on the internet, go to Wikipedia. When you get to Wikipedia, in the search field for Wikipedia, I want you to type in Japanese Americans 1942, and you'll find out all about your precious fucking rights, okay? All right, you know about it. Just his socioeconomic, political, all of his views, they're just as relevant today as they were back when he um, you know, originally present these views when really they were taboo at the time almost. So it's like, you know, courage transcends generations. And I feel like, you know, that definitely um, speaks for him as well. So I'm just happy to have been a part of this. What you've noticed that about us, we love to declare war on things here in America. Anything we don't like about ourselves, we declare war on it. We don't do anything about it. We just declare war on it. It's the only metaphor, the only metaphor we have in our public discourse for solving problems, declaring war. We have to declare a war on everything. We have a war on crime, the war on poverty, the war on litter, the war on cancer, the war on drugs. But you ever notice, we got no war on homelessness, huh? No war on homelessness. You know why? There's no money in that problem. No money to be made off of the homeless. Your pop is just like so representative of this neighborhood, which is, you know, like I said, it's a, a think tank neighborhood. It's also kind of like, at a, at, a, at a time, it's kind of like a neighborhood of like heavy social democratic ideals, uh, which it seems like it informed a lot of his comedy. He was this broken hearted idealist, you know? He really did believe in the potential of this species and certainly the potential of the ideals of this country even though they were deeply flawed to begin with. Father's influence by helping us shape our ideas about the world and what's important and, and our ideals about the world and, and what should drive us and, 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 and who we should fight for. 
you know, and, and, and how to make a stamp in the world. And I really believe that that neighborhood really did that. We want to do what we can to preserve the culture and the legacy and the history of this neighborhood. So we came up with this Hero of Morningside Heights Award, and this is our, um, our presentation to you, Kelly, virtually, uh, since you can't be with us. I'm really, just really touched by all of this. Thank you. He um, broadcast out into the, into the backyard that somebody had escaped from Manhattan State Hospital <laughs> <laughs> and they were known to be in the yards, you know, in the backyards between 121st and 122nd Street. <laughs> and allegedly the playground cleared out in seconds. <laughs> of course it did. <laughs> I think we're part of a greater wisdom than we will ever understand. A higher order. Call it what you want. You know what I call it? The big electron. The big electron. Whoa. Whoa, whoa. It doesn't punish, it doesn't reward, it doesn't judge at all. It just is. And so are we, for a little while. Thanks for being here with me for a little while tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. And take care of somebody else. Thank you tonight. Yeah.